Tate from New Jersey. It's the SNL Nerds, the show where two comics from New Jersey nerd out about Saturday Night Live. I'm your co-host, John Trumbull. And I'm your co-host, Darren Patterson. Hello, Darren Patterson. Hello, sir. Hello, hello, hello. Hello? Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Hey, yeah. all right. <laughs> I thought I lost you there, fella. Yeah, no, no, no. I was just... You, I don't know. These beginnings, they're, they're always awkward. I, I, I never know how to start these conversations. It's fine once we get it going, but like at the beginning, it's always just, ugh, it's so artificial. Yeah, it's like uh, like conversations in real life or, uh, you know, meeting somebody for a blind date where you're just like, hey, so uh, so what do you do? Where are you from? Yeah. What's your major? Uh, it's, uh, what's, yeah. what's, your, what's your sign? Oh, right. We're not in college. It's not the 1970s. I can't ask <laughs> either of those things. No, you uh, can. I think like Zodiac signs are back in now. Are they? Okay. I think so. I, I always see people online, you know, tweeting about Mercury rising and the seventh moon in the house of the, uh, you know, the Andromeda. Yeah. Yes, exactly. House of the rising sun. <laughs> I, or maybe I, it's just maybe, maybe it's just the people I follow. They're a bunch of yeah. Weirdos. No, I haven't seen that. Okay. I didn't know that's the trend now. That's interesting, that's, I guess. I don't We're, I, we're in the age of I, Aquarius, I, baby. I'm not a, I'm not a big believer in astrology. I never have been. And, and yeah. I, I have like, there are good reasons for that. Um, Sounds like okay. exactly what a Taurus would say. <laughs> well, not a Taurus, but okay. Uh, uh, damn it! Uh, I took a shot in the dark and shot me. You right had a before. one in twelve chance, and, <laughs> and you blew it. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, there. I think there's a very good reason that I'm not a believer in astrology. I, the people I share my birthday with are, uh, let's see, Dom De Louise, ooh, Tempest Bledsoe from The Cosby Show, okay, um, uh. uh Coolio. I'm listening. Uh, and uh, uh, what's his name? The Aquaman guy. Oh, Momoa? Yeah, Jason Momoa. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a so, perfect man. Yeah, I mean, perfect. so obviously I have tons in common with all of those people. I could see it. I could see you <laughs> having sitting down for dinner with Coolio and Vanessa from The Cosby Show and Jason Momoa right. and just, just talking nonstop about everything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, because, you know, you look at all of us, it's like we're separated at birth. So. Uh, yeah, I, th I think for me, if I'm not mistaken, who has my birthday? I know, I think, uh, what was it? Uh, Eva Longoria. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Sure, yeah, I've always liked uh, you too. Judd, <laughs> uh, Judd Hirsch. And I, like, I, I thought you were going to say Apatow, but Judd Hirsch is cooler. No, yeah, and uh, I believe Fabio has my birthday as well. <laughs> Fabio! That's the big. That's the one I always say for last. <laughs> I have Coolio. You have Fabio. I love this. I Coolio. love this. <laughs> Coolio, Fabio, Coolio, Coolio, Fabio, Coolio, Coolio Fabio. Fabio. So yeah. So it's, I think we have new nicknames. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Tay from the church is the SNL nerds. I'm your co-host Fabio, <laughs> and I'm your co-host Coolio. Oh God, folks, chime in. Let us know if you want us to begin the podcast this way for now on. Yeah. <laughs> So, anyway, yeah, that's why I think astrology is crotch shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's exactly what a Capricorn would say. Uh, Leo. Damn it! All right. I should have. All right, well. You know, you had a 1 in 11 shot. <laughs> yeah, that's typical Pisces of me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is Pisces March? Yes, March 15. Eyes oh, of March. you're Pisces. Okay, all right. I, Eyes of March, baby. All right. Yeah, I know. I know April is Taurus because that's that's when my mom's birthday rolls around. Um, oh, okay. And let's see, my sister's in January, but I can't remember what her sign is. Oh, I just I don't don't pay attention to much of that sort of thing. Okay. All right. I hear. You. All right. You you're all about facts. You're not about the the woo woo science of uh, astrology. We get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't collect it. crystals and uh, I don't know numerology, whatever the. They're minimal. Oh shit! Ah, that that joke would have been good if I hadn't stumbled over it. <laughs> I was going to say they're minimal minerals, Marie, but that's tough to say. <laughs> Springsteen, minerals, Marie. That is that is a, that is tough. That's a, that's oh, a tough oh. thing. Yeah, Breaking Bad. All right, I, I was, I was doing the Breaking Bad reference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, okay. All right. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. I, I like it, what you did there. But it's tough to say they're minerals, Marie. 
it, yes. it's very tough. You have to sort of slow down and, and say that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, now you're just showing off. Yeah. Hey, oh. <laughs> All right. So anyway, we're, hi, we're, we're, we're John, we're Darren, we're, we're the SNL nerds. We're here to talk about SNL and chew bubble gum and we're all out of bubble gum. And, Absolutely. Uh, and this week we're here to talk about season 50 episode two from October 5th, 2024 with uh, returning host Nate Bargatze and musical guest Coldplay. Yeah. Uh, Nate Bargatze, stand-up comic, made a, a strong impression his first time out last season. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the one of the stronger episodes, I'd say, yes. he came out with. So, yeah, it makes sense that they, they'd want to have him back. I think yeah. this time around, they definitely know how to write for him better. They Because, I mean, Nate Bargatze, as an actor, uh, improv, uh, performer, not not doesn't have the biggest of range, the widest of range, really. No, but that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. He just has that sort of deadpan thing he does. And uh, it seems like the writers really know how to kind of write for him now and how to play up his strengths. I yes. think that showed throughout the, the episode. Like, uh, I would agree. I, mean, I would agree. They did a nice job tailoring this episode to him. Um, yeah. I mean, ultimately, I thought, you know, uh, cards on the table. I think this episode was definitely a step up from oh, uh, yeah. last week's. I think it was a couple steps up. Yeah. 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 No, this was, this was better. This was better. This was better. I mean, if, if, if this is like... An average episode for the season, I will be very, very happy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, good episode. Nothing bottomed out, I'd say. Nothing was a total fluke. So, yeah. No, yeah, I don't think I looked at anything and was like, oh, that was a total waste of time. Um, yeah. So. But let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Let's get into okay. this episode. All right. All right. So, first off, we have the VP debate cold open mm. with... Uh, Kamala and Doug watching the VP debate. We got, uh, you know, Maya Rudolph, Andy Samberg back as the second couple. I guess you'd call them the second couple. Uh, yeah, I guess that that's about right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, because I, I mean, uh, did you yeah, watch the VP debate? First of I, all, I didn't. Tuesday? I did not. Like, I, I already okay. know who I'm going <clears> to <throat> vote for. And I don't know. To be honest, like, I just to see, you know, Trump or Vance talk, like, it just kind of. I break out in hives. I'm just like, I don't. Yeah. He's, he's, this is insane. He's, that person is clearly not fit for this job. And the fact that he's made it this far is just kind of makes my stomach turn. So, yeah. like, so no, no, I haven't seen it. But from what I hear, yeah. it was actually a pretty, like, civil debate. And they actually found some common ground. I remember somebody tweeting out, Oh yeah, this is what debates were like before 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was, <laughs> it was mostly like them talking policy there weren't like a lot of cheap shots and things like that so it was very refreshing in that regard because like you know vance um you know evil motherfucker uh but he can string a sentence together he he's coherent that's so that's the bar that. yeah. yeah that's the bar no that's where yeah. the bar is at yeah it really is it really is it's it's just it's nuts how much insanity has been normalized in the last decade it really um, is like i Oh, yeah, 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 but okay. So yeah, so I I watched the real debate. So I I kind of had that in mind when I was watching the sketch, and and so I have a few problems with the sketch because of that. I think. Um, okay. All right. So so yeah. we got Heidi and Chloe as the CBS moderators, and I remember like when when the debate aired on Tuesday, people were like, "Oh yeah, Chloe Chloe Feynman's totally going to play that other moderator." And yep, they were right. Yeah, um, does so she look a lot like like Chloe? Yeah, there is a resemblance, definitely. Um, yeah, okay. All right, fair enough. And we had, you know, so once again, we have Bowen Yang as J.D. Vance and uh, Jim Gaffigan as Tim Walls. So that was fun. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I like the way that they kind of structured this one, this cold open, like, because like usually, because we knew there would be a, a VP debate in the cold open, like for sure. Uh, but I like the way they kind of flipped it where instead of just them recreating the VP debate, like kind of, you know, verbatim, beat for beat, they flipped it up. So it was the um, Kamala and Doug watching it from home. Yeah. So you, you have like, you have the sort of, the telling two stories, whereas it's, it's the debate and it's Kamala and Doug and like their thoughts on it. So I was like, oh, that's a good yeah, way to break I, it up. I, I feel like they wrote it that way because they were just like, okay, well, we've got all these ringers playing Kamala, uh, Doug and, and Biden. 
So we got to get them into this somehow. And that was probably the most organic way they could do it. So yeah, yeah that's, that's fine. They had, uh, <laughs> I like to joke about Wall's grading papers. He was like grading midterms during debates. Cause he was like a lot of times during the debate, he was looking down cause he was like taking notes. Um, right. And um, yeah. And there were jokes of course about uh, where I guess Walt was saying he was at, he was at Tiananmen square at some time and he but yeah you have to sort of clarify it's like oh well i got mixed up i was actually at epcot and that was, right right and I, yeah that yeah. was cute um and and they they made a bit of a joke about how they agreed a lot and you know kamala was saying like why are they friends why are they vibing um and and we have uh carby coming in as joe biden and you know carby i feel like has really nailed the current characterization of biden as this sort of Adult guy. Yeah, so. like I really think I mean out of all the Bidens we gotten, this might be the best Biden since maybe Sudeikis, I'd say. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. Like because he and, like, and it feels like the Biden of the moment. So Yes, yeah. it feels like modern day Biden, definitely. Like I, I was yeah. even watching it, like the way that Dana Carvey is sort of kind of has that catchphrase of his, you know, guess what? Mm-hmm. By the way, like it seems like he took that catchphrase, that thing that Biden mm-hmm actually does say i actually saw some old biden yeah. um clips and he actually does say and by the way so i feel like yeah, carvey yeah. took that and sort of built the whole impression around that sort of the same way he did with uh george bush and you know not going to do it and with, yeah and with perot with uh you know kind of finish kind of finish yeah you know, yeah carvey way. is excellent at, at finding like a small thing to magnify in his impressions and then he makes an exaggerated portrait of the person out of that. And yeah, I mean, he's, that's why I think he's one of the best impressionists that SNL has ever had. And I, I feel like he, he does nail like what the current perception of Biden is, you know, as this well-meaning, but somewhat befuddled older guy. And, you know, you can debate on how accurate that is at the moment, but I, I feel like Carvey is really nailing it. And, I mean, the stuff he did with the ice cream cone was hilarious. Yeah, so there was, there was one point where there were um, Biden and Kamala and 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 Doug were watching the debates. And, you know, there, there were, I think they were kind of iffy on it because uh, Walt came back with that, with that one question to Vance about, like, would you, will you say that Trump lost the 2020 election? In a, a, uh, right. And Vance said, like, I'm, I'm forward, I'm looking forward to the future, man. Yeah, and yeah. They counted which, that which as was a, a moment in the real debate. Yeah, Oof. yeah, and they counted that as a win, and they cut back to yeah. Kamala and Biden, and Biden's just eating a soft serve ice cream, just just mm-hmm. out of nowhere. Yeah, and I think, and, then, point, and then he swings his arm and he just sticks it right in in Maya's face, and it's yep. like dripping <laughs> off her chin onto her blouse. Yeah, it was and, a nice, a funny little moment there. Yeah, yeah, and then like. When they're getting ready to say live from New York, Carvey just like tosses it forward. And I was like, oh, I feel bad for the poor stage man who had to clean up that ice cream cone before the model. Yeah, he just chucks that shit. Just tosses it like, ah, I, I'm I hope they had like a bucket or something for him to chuck that into. I hope so. It's like some, some, some poor like, I don't know. It, you know. If you've ever seen the, the time lapse, you know, they have like literally like two minutes to remake home base for the monologue and clear off all the set stuff and it's yeah. there is like it is like down to the last second so yeah yeah somebody um, get out the swiffer yeah i i this was decent i i feel weird that they they skipped over uh some of vance's stuff like they they totally skipped over the moment in the debate where uh, vance's mic got muted because he just kept going on and i was like oh. that's, that's really weird because that was kind of ripe for parody yeah, so that's I true. feel a little weird about that, but yeah, I mean, they didn't mention the fact that, like, uh, I remember another moment from what I heard, like, about how he said, Oh, I thought you weren't gonna fact check this, don't fact check that, don't fa- fact check anything about what I'm saying right now. Yeah, so yeah, I thought that was, I, I mean, and also, I, I, I will admit, maybe they did it for time because I will, you know, one mm-hmm. th- thumbs up, I guess I'll give about this cold open is that it was shorter. Than uh, it was last week. This was a nice. <laughs> yeah, nice... this was what, like eight minutes. Yeah, they, a a good five minutes shorter than the uh, cold open from last week. So I was like, well, true, true. Yeah. So, so I was like, thumbs up. 
yeah. I mean, they weren't trying to trying to cover an entire summer in one sketch. So absolutely. So, uh, but yeah. yeah, but I see what you mean. They they could have done more stuff to include more things about what Vance did. But overall, yeah, I thought it was a pretty decent, uh, pretty solid uh, cold open. Yeah, I just you know my my caveat is just like if if somebody had an idea of what the debate was like just from the sketch, I feel like they'd be getting sort of a distorted impression. So, yeah, no, fair enough. Because yeah. they did include the thing with uh, walls and the I'm friends with school shooters thing. But yeah, they, they should have maybe yeah. mentioned the, the, the mic muting thing as well. But maybe yeah, they had to because maybe was they had a to, bigger moment. Yeah, I mean, maybe they had to cut it for time because uh, Nate's uh, cold open or Nate's monologue, rather. Uh, I don't know. But, yeah. But either way, decent cold open. I will say that. Yes, yes. All right. So should we talk about Nate's monologue? Nate Bargatze, monologue, hand mic. Hand mic, you know, because it's he's a stand-up comedian. And it's the law, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, basically his stand-up set. Uh, a lot of jokes mm-hmm. about how he's not very bright. Uh, how he, you know, went to community to, college. Yes, because people there, when people that go to community college, like they. You know, those people are probably going to be staying in your community. As I tell you, yeah, kind of yeah. treat you. Uh, Talk talks about, about how the... he, he took speech class. And... Yes, because he had the trouble saying oil. He says oil. Yeah. And he's, instead, of yeah. oil instead of olive oil, he says olive oil. Yeah, because he's, he's Southern, and that's how they say yeah. it down there. You know how those yokels say it, right? Right, John? Yeah, and then and then he uh, then he segued into extra virgin olive oil, and he's like, "No, I just I just want the regular amount of virgin olive oil. I don't I don't need extra." Um, Which is a funny little joke. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. joke. Talked about uh, how he hasn't eaten a raspberry since he until uh, he was forty. Yeah, he had that nice line. It's like, look, I didn't see raspberries growing up. I didn't come from money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he's like, you know, I pointed at, at a bowl of raspberries and I said, well, you know, what, what is that? And and people were like, oh, that's a bowl because they couldn't conceive that I didn't <laughs> know what a raspberry was. Well, obviously he knows what raspberries are. So it's, yeah. it's more sense. That he doesn't know what a bowl is. And I like I liked his DoorDash material. You know, talking about how he uses DoorDash like it's Tinder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, just some good stuff in here, like a lot of relatable material, just kind of everyman mm-hmm. stuff. Um, decent, decent, uh, monologue, I thought. Yeah, it was fun. You know, it, it was just fun that it, you know, it's just good, solid stand up. Nothing, nothing topical about it. Just, yeah, it, yeah. It's just funny. Not offensive, it's, not here to rattle any cages. Just, yeah, no, just, just funny jokes, man. <laughs> yeah, just talk about DoorDash and uh, contactless delivery and just get right on out. Double dashing it. Double, <laughs> you know, double. About ordering from two different. Restaurants and DoorDash, and how the drivers are arriving at the same time. Yeah, and, and like one of them has to let the other one in. It's like, oh no, you go, you go first. You, which I didn't yeah. even know about Double Dash. I didn't know that was a thing. I have never Double Dashed. I mean, that's I, I, I kind of want to try it now, though. Oh wow, just for the thrill of it. Yeah, it's a yeah. rush, man. You know, like, like they're having a race. Yeah, <laughs> it's a race against the clock. Yeah. You know, is uh, my blizzard going to arrive first or is my meal going to arrive first? I, I don't know, man. With, place your bets. Yeah. Come on, DraftKings, get on this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, decent monologue. Decent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. enjoyable. I, I Look, I always in, enjoy seeing like a, a stand-up post because I know if nothing else, even if the rest of the show sucks, we're, we're going to get some solid stand-up. And absolutely. This was no disappointment. Nope, not at all. Uh, yeah, uh, so first sketch of the episode, the sketch we all kind of knew was going to happen. It's the sequel to Washington's Dream, Washington's Dream 2. Yeah, yeah, to oh. no one's surprise, really. I mean, we, we knew yeah. they were going to try and follow this up somehow. Yeah, um, like part of me was hoping, well, maybe they have, I don't know, like because part of me thinks, well, th- these are SNL writers. These are supposed to be the best of the best cream of the crop right. so they should have like a wealth of different other ideas that they can just pop out of their heads but the, but but counterpoint yeah 11 million views on youtube <sighs> yeah so, uh, this, 
this was inevitable, I think. I mean, <laughs> and I'm not I'm not saying they shouldn't have done it. I mean, I think if I were in Lauren's shoes, I would have done the same. I would have been like, you know, it would be nice if, if we had something in the vein of Washington's dream for this <laughs> show. Because that did well for us last time. Yeah, maybe do it a sequel there, uh, Mikey. You want to do a sequel? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this one's written by uh, Mikey Funtime and uh, Mike DiCenzo. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it's... And, and Streeter. Oh, yeah, Streeter, of course. Yeah, Streeter um, Seidel, head writer. Yes. Oh, yeah, he's the one that retweeted this. Okay. Yeah, Streeter, yes. Mike. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. Sorry, Streeter. Apologies. I mean, look, if, if Mikey Day wrote a sketch, chances are it was co-written with Streeter. And yeah, they... you know, maybe a couple other people, too. Two of them so, are, are partners in crimes. They're thick of thieves. So this time, you know, it's pretty much the same setup as before. Uh, we got, uh, except this time it's during Washington's crossing of the Delaware. And so right. we got uh, Bergazzi as, as Washington. We got uh, Bowen and James Austin Johnson and Keenan. And uh, who was the fourth? Mikey. Uh, it, was, it was Mikey. Mikey, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's basically... It, it's, it's pretty much beat for beat the same as the first uh, Washington's Dream, except he, he brings up new things that he wants to sort of enact right. in the new country. Like, you know, and when the new world is here, we'll have uh, one word. We'll have a word for the number 12 dozen. And like, well, what about yes. the other numbers? They, they won't have a word. Only tw- no. only 12 will have its own words and people yeah. will be free to spell words differently, like the word donut. Or the yeah, name or Jeff. The name Jeff. Yeah. Yes. Which is weird that there's like that way to spell Jeff with the G. Like that always. That always. I always want to see it G O F. You know. G O F. Yeah. It's it's just a weird. It's it's weird. Yeah. I yeah. felt the same way when I found out that S E A N spells Sean. Like that's that's scene, right? Am I nuts <laughs> in thinking that? It does look like scene. Yes. Yeah, yeah. but it's it's. Everybody's like, no, it's not seen Bean, it's Sean Bean. I'm like, I hey, Yeah, well, know. I'm cool with it because of Sean Connery. So yes. you know, oh, okay. That's true. All right. You know, look, the, the man can spell his name any way he wants, you know. So I I I actually think of the S E A N as the normal way to spell Sean now. Wow. Like the Hot Sean t- Cassidy way, get out of here with that shit. Hot take. Yeah, it Hot makes more brush. sense, but the cooler it's- Sean spell it like Sean Connery. Yes, and Sean it's, Bean. It's scene of the dead, not Sean of the dead. That's right. That's right. Wow, yeah. controversial take, sir. I will die on this hill. Um, uh, we also he, talk about how we're going to have two names for animals. You know, one when they're alive, and then another one when they're food. <laughs> yes. Um, so Cat. cows are beef, pigs are pork, and chicken. That one stays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, hamburger will, of course, be made out of beef, not ham. Right. And but don't worry, hot dogs will not be made out of dogs. Right. Yes. And then uh he's asking well, and, we'll... and, then, and then when James Austin Johnson just says, shouldn't we know what's in a hot dog? He just says, Get out of the boat. <laughs> get out. Just get out. <laughs> and yeah, forces him over for it. That that was cute. Right. Um uh, talking about how, you know, our children will in, in the school system with our children, like the first year of school will be called kindergarten, second mm-hmm. year of school. First grade. Yeah. There'll be 12 grades. And then, and then they say, oh, so a dozen grades. And I think my favorite read of the of the sketch was him just going, that's no. <laughs> that, that's not how that works. No. No. That's no. Right. Um, and of course, yeah. they also do the runner with Keenan saying, and, you know, people like, like me will be freed from after this war. Is that correct? And then he kind of goes after off. a war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's it's this war, right? And then he just walks away and yeah. doesn't answer the question. Um, um this was all right. It's it's definitely a downgrade from the first one. Um I think the fact that they were in a boat, it made the staging really awkward. Yeah, yeah, that too. You know, and because there's just not much you can do. You can't really move around real freely when you're even even when you're on a fake boat. Yeah, that's true. You can only do so much. And, like, yeah. it does, I guess, lack the freshness of uh, the first time seeing it, because, like, we already kind of know the beats. Yeah. That we already know kind of what's going to happen. The jokes are still, are still solid and still good, but it... They're still like, good. They're reaching a little bit more, you know? A little bit, yeah. Like, I mean, if Nate comes 
back to host for a third time, which I kind of feel like he might do because they seem to really like him. I mean, I think he did really well the first time, and I think he did really well last night. So, yeah, I would I would definitely like to see him host again. Yeah, like ho- part of me hopes that they don't revisit this again. Like I hope this doesn't become his uh, diner lobster, and like he just right. have to keep doing this every time he comes back. Well, if they do it again, I feel like we got to do something to mix it up a little more. Um, yes, absolutely. You know, even to the point of him not playing Washington again. You know, just pick some other moment in history. Maybe. Yeah, know, just that's true. Something more to freshen it up more. Yeah, we had other wars. We can, we got so many other wars to choose from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have him be General Patton or whatever. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, General Patton. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But overall, decent. I'll say decent. Uh, decent, yeah. I mean, like, we knew it was coming. We yeah. knew it probably wasn't going to be as good. And, you know, it did It did fulfill those expectations, I would say. <laughs> yes. but, but it was still good. I don't, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a bomb. Nothing no. more than a bomb. No, uh, yeah. No. I mean, there were, there were some funny moments in there, so, you know, that's I'm fine with it. Yeah. Uh, next up, Golf Tournament, written by Streeter and Mikey. The dynamic yeah. duo strikes again. Yeah. It's a pre-tape. Um, we got uh, Nate as a golfer, Brady Knoll, who uh, he, he's taking a swing, and he, like, kills a bird. He makes a bird explode. Yes, just because. boom. <laughs> And I will yeah. say this, like, the graphics yeah. in this uh, pre-tape, pretty impressive. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, because it's actually shot outdoors, and... Uh, yeah, and it's... Yeah, they did it's, this nice yeah, it's made, yeah, it's made to look like a, you know, outdoor gar- golfing event like you see on the Golf Channel, and it, it, it looks pretty impressive, I'd, I'd mm-hmm. say, for sure. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, he, yeah. He, he hits his first golf ball, kills a bird immediately, everybody gasps right. in horror, uh, he tries it again. Accidentally knocks a nest out of the tree. Sure enough, yeah. oh no, it's a bald eagle's nest. <laughs> oh no, and it's illegal to kill a bald eagle, so he has to like talk to the park rangers and all this. And yeah, and then you know, finally, when that's cleared up, he's he's taken another shot in the debris below the tree, and he he actually hits uh, a bald eagle egg instead of his ball. And oh no, yeah, it's just uh, basically every time he swings his golf club, he kills an animal yeah yeah he yeah, throws like, his club and it, it goes into the water and he kills a snapping turtle mascot fairway fred yeah i did like the after this happened uh because nate's character is wearing like a nike hat and a nike shirt yeah uh the people at nike come out to like cover up the nike logo he's wearing because they don't yeah. want to be associated with him anymore <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, oh, come on, man, really? <laughs> <laughs> so we see Longfellow come out and put black tape over the Nike logo. I thought that was pretty funny. That was cute. That was cute. And then, uh, you know, the, the bit at the end, he, he, he gets like a hole in one. But then when they're putting the flag into the hole, he, he stabs a chipmunk that ran into the hole. Yeah. Um, I thought this wasn't bad, but it was it was kind of predictable. I mean, you know, after the first two animals are killed, you kind of know, okay, well, this is how this is going to go. And yeah, yeah. I, I guess I wanted another turn in there. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's true. Like once you see what the gag is of, oh, okay, he's just killing animals left and right. Yeah, uh, yeah. The escalation doesn't really kind of go further than that. I mean, that's probably why things like. Somebody from Nike covering up the logo got a big, bigger Uh-oh. laugh out of me. Suddenly, I'm not hearing you. Up, oh, hello, hello. Um, you can't hear me. Ah, oh, shit. Oh wait, wait. Hello? I, 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 I started to hear an ah shit. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh. I can hear you now. Oh, that was weird. That was right. very weird. I don't. I didn't get a notification. I lost my connection or anything. Oh dear. All right. That was weird. Um, Okay. Right, well, I'm just making right, note um, of it. So, yeah, back up a little bit. You were talking about how it didn't really escalate. Okay. So, yeah, it didn't really escalate as as uh, much as I had liked. Maybe that's why, I'd, like, the moments where, you know, somebody from Nike comes out to cover up the logo, like, hit a little bit harder for me because, like, that's something a little bit more to sort of keep the sketch going. But, yeah, overall, I thought it was the sketch decent. Um you know, it's a short sketch. It doesn't really overstay its welcome. But yeah, there's not that much escalation. It's just pretty much, hey, we're killing animals and we're out. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was decent, but it didn't surprise me too much. So, yeah. So, therefore, it's it's only going to make me laugh a moderate amount. So, right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, a little, not bad, but kind of predictable. I hear you. So, um, I'd give it, I don't know, a B minus or a C plus, one of those. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I give it a four smashed eagle eggs. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, um, next up, uh, Sabado Gigante. Ooh, I like the enthusiasm. Yes. <laughs> uh, so it's a, a, a Spanish game show thing. Uh, yeah, with, I mean, uh, uh, for this one, I believe, was written by uh, Stephen Castillo, Brian mm-hmm. Tucker, and Dan Bulla, and, of course, Marcelo, uh, because right. I don't know how many people know about Sabado Gigante. This is an actual show. It's actually... Right. A uh, show that airs on, uh, I believe, Univision. It's been around like since the '80s, right. I want to say, uh-huh. and uh, it's huge in the Latin community, uh, mm-hmm. and it's just as batshit insane as the sketch portrays it out to be. Like I've seen it, uh, you know, growing up, and like I to this day, I still wouldn't know how to explain it to somebody else. It's like, yeah, kind of a game show, but kind of a variety show, mm-hmm. and just it it, it kind of plays out like a. Uh, like an acid trip where just weird shit just happens out of nowhere. A lot of, a lot of attractive women in sparkly dresses. Oh yes, and... that's that was that, yes. that was the main draw for uh, young Darren Patterson. I, <laughs> I was like, like hey, damn it, I don't need to speak this language. I Ooh. I speak the language of attractive women in sparkly dresses. I speak <laughs> so, the language of love. <laughs> so I, this felt like sort of like a spiritual sequel to me uh, to like the soul food sketch that he did. Uh, last year last season oh where you know it's like nate is he's like the uncomfortable white guy in a culture that is not his own so yes i, I felt like it had that in common because he's he plays an audience member joshua rogers and he wins a raffle and he like comes up and he's like oh no no i don't i don't need to do this i'm I, i'm just here to like kill time i didn't know what this was yeah he and, he was visiting miami he got free tickets to this show and now he's right Somehow on stage. I thought you were going to say this reminded you a lot of the old uh, Chris Farley, Mike Meyer sketch where Chris Farley is on stage at a Japanese game show and he becomes one of the contestants, but he doesn't speak Japanese. So, oh, you know, wow. I don't think I re- I barely remember that. It's uh, so, no, yeah, it, didn't it's make that connection. It's a sketch. I went way- back one year to another sketch with the same guy. <laughs> I, so I, went, I went back and how deep my cultural references go. I hopped into DeLorean. I went way back in time, baby. You uh, did. You did. Uh, um, you might be able to find it on YouTube. It's a, it's a sketch uh, Alec Baldwin was the host, because I remember he was in it, too. It was like right. him, Janine Garofalo. Back when you could still do yellow face on TV. Yes. A better time. Yeah. Somewhere. Well, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Jokingly, I say that. Some I, would say. Not us. Not us. Not us. God, no. I would we never would say, that. say that. We would not say that. but So, so basically... Um, yeah, Nate's character Joshua Rogers. He's he's very confused for this whole thing because he doesn't speak Spanish, so he doesn't really know what's going on. I don't speak Spanish, so I only sort of know what's going on from context clues. Um, yeah, but I think that plays into that. That actually helps you because you're just as confused and bewildered by everything that's going on as mm-hmm. uh, Joshua Rogers. Yes, yeah, like so the fact that he says things like like he says very calmly. Oh wow! I think I'm I think I'm having a panic attack, <laughs> like things like that. Yeah. Uh, and then at one point you're asked to pick a number, and mm-hmm. you choose the, you choose a number, and then some man dressed as a Power Ranger plays a trumpet out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, then at one point the host Marcelo puts on like a top hat made out of astroturf and soccer balls. Mm-hmm. And uh, as yeah, you do, yeah, yeah, as you do. There's a guy dresses Dracula. There's a puppet an orange puppet dressed as a sailor and mm-hmm. it's just it just seems like a big old fever dream yeah. and then at the end of it you win five dogs yes yes you win five dogs at the end of it so instantly yeah the boom love this sketch you know yes <laughs> and it's strong yeah put dogs in a sketch i'm gonna love it i'm an easy mark yeah um yeah i thought this sketch was okay again it's like a thing where escalation was kind of there but not really like i I guess it played like i guess it more depended on this the random bizarreness of Mm -hmm. everything going on yeah 
like you not knowing what's happening. And then at one point you, you said like a, there's a version of a little boy is dressed up as you out of nowhere that just comes out. And yeah, that too. was funny. That was funny. I yeah. like that. And at one point you have to do like karaoke with somebody as a lion dressed up behind you. And yeah, like how, like the whole thing is just like a big old fever dream. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It was all right. Not my favorite. Um, Pass the time agreeably, but yeah. Yeah, I would say so. But yeah, I definitely, it definitely wasn't, I would say bad. It was, but no, but definitely didn't really kind of hook me like I, like I hoped it would, but I did enjoy you know, the fact that I knew what they were referencing and just the madcap uh, insanity that is uh, Sabado Gigante was captured. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if we gave the writing credits for this one. This was uh, Stephen Castillo, Brian Tucker, Dan Bula, and Marcelo Hernandez. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, next up, let's go on down to the water park. Water park. So uh, basically we start off at a water park. And we hear that their big slide, their big attraction was closed down for a medical emergency. The devil's dog drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that is, that is, uh, that, that creates an image. That's a, that's a name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they create a real image later on. Yeah. Oh, they do. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, and we, we find out that the, uh, their most popular water slide is closed because of a medical emergency. And then we, we get into the sketch and there's a guy who's died at the top of the water slide. Yeah, he was a, like in his eighties, passed away right at the top, right, right when he was about to go. Yeah, uh, we see the EMTs are there. Uh, we see mm-hmm. Longfellow and Bargatze put a uh, sheet over the uh, deceased body. Uh, yeah. We see uh, the two lifeguards are there: Devin Walker and our uh, Jane Wickline, new cast yes. member, one of our new cast members. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, they pronounced him dead. They did a little moment of silence, and they were like. Okay, that's good. <laughs> a comically <laughs> short moment of silence. And they're like, should we have a moment of silence? Okay. <laughs> it's literally like that long, and it's very funny. Right. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so the, you know, the deceased is right there at the top of the slide, shoot over him. Now the EMTs are like, well, now we have to get him down. How can we do that? Yeah. And then they're uh, like, well. There are a lot of stairs here, right? Oh, yeah, 255. Yeah. Ooh, that's a lot. That's- that's a lot of that's a lot of stairs, and then they sort of just start subtly hinting they should just push him down the water slide. Um, so, like you know what we could do, yeah, just just throwing it out there. But but I love that they they just hint around it and they they make Jane Wickline's character verbalize it, and so so after that it's her idea. They're like, oh whoa right. oh uh, okay, I mean yeah. If you think, I mean, maybe we shouldn't carry him past all these kids. And then they, they cut to another shot and there are a bunch of kids just standing there on the <laughs> side on the stairs. Yeah. And I do like the premise of the sketch. The fact that yeah. it's like, you know, yeah, of course, saying it would be easier just to push him down the slide right. would, would be easier for us. But it's it's a horrible thing to push a dead, dead body down a slide. Right. So you can't say that. So you have to sort of dance around it in a, right. in a weird way. And that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the main premise of the sketch. And I, and I was also abused by, like, <laughs> some of the child extras are different, just happy. <laughs> they are, yeah. like, not getting with the moment of, like, we should be somber. Some of them are just like, we're on TV! Yay! <laughs> that man is taking a nap. Yeah. Um, and they're like, well, you know, it seems like he really wanted to go down the water slide. It actually seemed respectful to do that that way. Yeah, and then of course Jane is like, well, you know, of course that he like this man had a family. Like, how would they feel if they saw his, you know, the, their loved one's body sliding down the slide with and after and having a picture of it taken? Because like, I, I guess at the bottom of the slide is one of those rides where they automatically take your picture and you know sell it to you for like fifty bucks or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and, and Nate Bergazzi just goes, "Well, we we just wouldn't buy the picture, <laughs> I mean, you know, like fifteen bucks. That's <laughs> that's kind of a scam. It's a rip off, man." <laughs> and then Devin's like, "Oh no, well, actually, I know the guy who who does the picture, so we could we could get a deal there." It's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> yeah. So suddenly Devin's on board for having this, you know, this deceased body go down the slide. So now that everybody's right, and they, to... they have a vote, and they're like, "Okay, well, you know, if we do Mary's idea of like pushing him down." 
<laughs> and I, I love how they're just throwing her under the bus when she had nothing to do and she's the main objector, but it's like now her idea because she's the first one to verbalize it. Uh, that was really fun. I mean, it, it's made all the funnier uh, from because, you know, Longfellow and, and Nate are both so good at deadpan stuff. So Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. I really like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad Marcella, uh, not Marcella, uh, Longfellow, rather, mm-hmm. got, a, got a chance to sort of shine in a sketch. Because he is very good at this sort of matter-of-factly deadpan type of comedy. Yeah. And like so, something like this, of course, he would excel at. And, and sure enough, he did. I really liked his work in this sketch, for sure. Yeah, and apparently this is one that he had in the works for a while. So I'm glad, you know, they kind of circled back to it. And it, it worked really well. And I don't, I don't know who this would have originally written for, but... I can't see it working better than with Bergazzi. So yeah, no, he was the perfect person for it. Yeah. Um, yeah so then at the end of the sketch, they all agree to just push this uh, corpse down, <laughs> down, down a water slide. And then that's when Devin's like, well, actually you need two people to do this. You're like, to, you know, for the weight so we can take off. So of yeah, course, so you can go through the loop, <laughs> go through the loop. And then, and then the two of them are like, Oh, I call shotgun. God, yeah. and he has to like wrap his legs around the corpse and and then they cut to like a, a photo of them coming down out out the dog's anus <laughs> god <laughs> which is another you know totally unnecessary detail but you know nicely absurd and it added a nice thing i mean this this was sketch of the night for me yeah I mean, just... such a yeah such a dark but silly sketch uh yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed this one yeah i enjoyed this one a lot too i mean this this was fun. Um, you know, Washington Dreams, it was, it was fun to revisit that. But, I mean, this I dug more just because it was original. So Yeah, it was a new, fresh idea that I hadn't seen before. So, yeah. yeah. This, you know, this old one. and busted, new hotness. That's right. <laughs> no doubt. That's right. I went Men in Black 2 on it. Yeah. Damn, son. All right, K. <laughs> old and busted. New hots. <laughs> I make this look good. Yeah. Uh, uh, so next we have our musical guest of the week, uh, a, a little band called Coldplay. Yes, they can. Two songs, uh, We Pray and All My Love, which is right. not a cover of the Led Zeppelin song, which uh, all as, as I've learned. Love, all, all of my love, all, all of my love, my love for you. you. All of my love, love, get you. Woo! Yeah, it wasn't that. Uh, it was not yeah, that. No, it was, yeah, what we just did, it was not what they did. It was not uh, what they did. Um, I really didn't take any notes for this. Like, Neither did I. I was just like, yep, that's a Coldplay song, all right. Yep, yeah. that's another Coldplay song, all right. And I was, I mean, um, they're fine. I'm not, I'm not the hugest Coldplay fan in the world. I like some of their stuff. Some of it I'm just like, eh. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the, fine. yeah, I mean, like the last song, the last Coldplay joint I really liked was maybe Clocks, <laughs> like uh-huh. that was like way back when. But like since then, every song kind of sounds, you know, the sameish to me. Like you know, uplifting yeah. stadium arena rock that you'd hear at like a FIFA game or something like that. Yeah, and yeah, so, I, I was about the uh, Vita La Vida. Um, yeah, I, I dug that, um, but you know, I haven't really kept up with the Coldplay since and. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, this is fine. Did you yeah. notice in the second number when they were doing Re- "We Pray" that the camera was caught in in the shot at one point? No, I don't think I did. Yeah, when one of the backup singers she was singing, like we saw briefly, like one of the other cameras just like slide right down, and I was like, "Wow, that hardly ever happens on SNL." So it really, Ew. it really caught my attention. Wow, I mean, I mean, to be honest, I probably. I might not have been in the room when that happened. I might have like gone out for a, a pee break or gotten some drink of water. I really wasn't paying attention just because I I know those the Coldplay performances are kind of eh whatever. And then I went back and rewatched <laughs> it, and uh-huh. I was like, yeah, this this is what I thought it'd be. Yeah. Okay. So Coldplay, nice, inoffensive. Yep. Uh, you know, palatable. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, they recently announced, I think, that their uh, 12th album, I think it's their 12th album, they said that's going to be their last. That's going to be it for them. Uh, we'll see about that. Yeah, who knows? You know, Daniel yeah. Day-Lewis is coming out of retirement, so, you know. Yeah, anything. Anything possible. can happen. It, it, it's all up in the air now. 
That's right. And up is down, left is right. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Absolutely. So, well, you know, not, not bad. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, next we got weekend update with uh, two claps Che and no claps Jost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They were, they were, ha- I mean, wow. It just, it's really cool to see them in this kind of loosey goosey stage of their, uh, tenure where they're just uh-huh. they're just like the, the, the banter is just back and forth just always sharp it, they're just mm-hmm. dishing out jokes that they're, they're not nervous at all it's it's pretty much old hat to them at this point they just they got their work yeah yeah they just couldn't be more comfortable uh dishing out these jokes that's true that's true and they they've got their rapport down really well they know they know the role that each one of them is going to play they know how they relate to each other yeah, there, there is. It is a nice comfort level, and it's been. Yeah, it's going to be weird when whoever takes over weekend update after these guys, which will probably be after this season, I would wager. Um, I I'd, I'd be very surprised if they came back for season fifty one. Like, because didn't yeah the the news broke this week that like Che's got like some sort of other late night show in the works, right? Yeah, like I've been seeing Che kind of tweet out some stuff about him kind of doing like this kind of talk show ish type of show mm. over at the Comedy Cellar and he's kind of, you know, has like other comedians on and it's a bit of a soft launch. So I, I think it's like him kind of kind of testing out the waters a bit. And But right. I do like the name of the show. It's called um, Don't Sleep with Michael Che. Oh, that's a great name. Yeah. It's a great name. It, it works. Very funny. Works on so many levels. It does. Uh, it does. Yeah. So it, it seems like, it seems like Che is getting his ducks in a row in order to make an exit after this season. And I imagine right. Joe's kind of has some, uh, you know, uh, cooks on the stove happening or now as well. So like, I feel like if I was a betting man, I mean, I, yeah, I, I guess he does. I, he doesn't really have to, the man's married to Scarlett Johansson for growing up. Loud. Right. Just kick, <laughs> you know, he could just, he could just retire, become a house husband. Yeah. And like, you know, raise their kids. Buy and, another ferry. Yeah. Buy another ferry. <laughs> I mean, and absolutely no shade. I mean, that's probably what I would do if I were in his shoes. Yeah, there's a whole fleet of ferries, like an armada. An, ar- an armada. Fairies. Well, I meant the house husband thing, not, oh, not yes. the ferry we'll thing. Do. But <laughs> you wouldn't want a fleet of ferries. You want to be a... well. Who doesn't want a fleet of ferries, really? <laughs> you don't want to be a, a commodore or whatever. Sure, sure. Um, uh, but see. yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't write down too many jokes uh, from this weekend. The, the two I. I wrote down where uh, they were talking about how the Biden administration has created uh, 245,000 new jobs. All Diddy accusers. Woo! Wait. Take that, Diddy. What, uh, what, it was, what, what was the real number? It was like 120 accusations. Uh, something against, like Against P. Diddy. Something like that. I mean, Diddy's been getting away with a lot of heinous shit for a lot of years. So yeah, and the numbers I don't just, surprise me. Here in the ex- like, I, I read that story and it was like 120 new accusers and some as young as oh, what was it? Was it like it was like eight or nine? It was some horrifying number like that. And I was like, I don't know which one of those numbers I find more disturbing. Yeah, it's like one of those things where he's wealthy enough that he can do whatever he wants and. Yeah, people kind of turned a blind eye to it. It's uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's gross. Yeah, yuck. yeah, yuck, yeah. yuck to you, Diddy. Yuck. You'll never be on this podcast. Yeah, that's yeah, right. and you know we were we were all set to have him on. He was going to become our third co-host. That's right. And then and then we laid down the law. And we were just like, no, offer no. rescinded. Yeah, no, you know what you did. Yeah, and guess what? And by the way. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, Snoop Dogg, I, offer's still open, though. Yes, of course. Yeah. Open door. I mean, I mean, unless, I mean, God forbid horrible things come out about him, but other than that, yes. Snoop Dogg, yeah. you're welcome. Yeah. Um, I did like the one joke Che had about Trump, about how he mm-hmm. refused to release his medical records, and he said, I'm pretty right. sure he knows why, but he's not allowed dementia it. Yeah. That was clever. That yeah. was cute. Because Trump's like- out of his mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, let's do And it. I, I like, I like the joke about how like the lesbian bar has opened its doors. Well, it's curtains. Yes, um, it's a great place to. Even though you can drink there, it's a great place to eat out. 
Yeah. That's kind of an old joke. I feel like I've heard that street joke before. Like, Probably. Like, what do lesbians, where do lesbians go for dinner, know where they eat out? Some, I don't know. <laughs> that sounds like an old joke. Yep. Yep. Heard it on the playground. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where but, all the uh, real education happens. <laughs> that's right. Street smarts. Yeah. School of hard knocks. Street smarts. <laughs> Uh, but yet, yeah, overall, not a bad uh, weekend update. I felt it was like a little mm-hmm. better than uh, last week's, but not too shabby. Yeah. And, and we uh, had uh, just one death segment. We had uh, Jane Wickline come on to sing a song about being a guest at a party. I'm, I'm sure this is from her stand-up act. I'm pot. This this gotta be. She she had to have like auditioned uh, with this. Yeah, um, it so- has high. This is from my stand-up act energy. Yes, uh, but which is good though. We get to see, we get to meet one on one one of the new cast members, uh, mm-hmm. Jane Wind- Wickline, and she's talking about partying. And she talks about, yeah, you know, I got to party as much as I can now because I was, I'm tall, so I'm gonna die young like a big dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is like, wow, that's that's quite a way to start out <laughs> with that line. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, she kind of almost like in a like Bo Burnham style. She kind of sings, yeah, very song- Bo Burnham. Yeah, yeah, very Bo Burnham esque talk, and she sings a song about partying. But as you hear the song, it's clear that the the party is over, but she's mm-hmm. still like kind of partying. Like she's talk, she sings about how the DJ is packing up his equipment, and she's right. like, "Oh, that's because he knows we don't need no music to keep this party going." Yeah, and, they're they're clearing keep, up the chairs, and he's like, "Yeah, more more for the dance floor," and the hosts are going up to bed, and yeah, so. It was, yeah. it was cute. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think at the first part, the first time I heard it, I didn't quite, you know, jive with it. But on second viewing, I kind of jive with it a little bit more. I don't, You're like, this is my jam. I thought it was okay. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know. I, I think maybe the first time it was maybe kind of hard to hear at some point. She was kind of mumbling. I don't know if it was nerves or whatnot, but mm-hmm. it was kind of, I don't know. Like, I kind of got the vibe she wasn't super used to performing in front of audiences, maybe. Like, I know... Um, because she comes from the world of TikTok, and I saw mm-hmm. one of our listeners, uh, Manette Moretti, mention this too, where it seemed like she was playing to the camera where she should have been playing to the crowd. And like, part yeah. of me wonders, is that because she kind of came up through the TikTok world and she's used to performing in front of, you know, a phone or a camera and like performing in front of live actual people is, might be a little foreign to her. I don't Maybe. know, did you get that vibe or is it just me? A little bit, yeah. I, I, I saw Manette wrote that, and I was like, yeah, I think there may be something to that. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, I thought the song was fine enough. I like little lines about, like, you know, six in the morning, she's still partying. Uh, mm-hmm. The mailman is here. Oh, it must he must be the stripper. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I've heard that the, the police are on their way. It's like, great, more strippers. Yeah, it, it was clever lyrics. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It, it painted a word picture. Yes, exactly. Painted a tapestry of pictures. Like how the uh, the the people, she's like she was invited to this party because she was the plus one of somebody who left hours ago, mm-hmm. and then as she keeps going on saying, yeah, that person didn't really know the host of this party either, right? And then at the very end of the song, she's like, yeah, that person I just made up, yeah, and the plus one of a plus one of a plus, yeah, it was cute. That was cute enough. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. weekend update, not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay. Uh, next up, Mile High Burger Challenge. Bam! Mile High Burger Challenge. Um, <laughs> this this was interesting. Like I also, I'd also like to point out the uh, exterior of the restaurant that they showed. Uh-huh. I recognize that restaurant. I know exactly where it oh, is. Really? I think it's in like in Long Island City. I want to say, or it's somewhere in Queens. But I've definitely been around that restaurant before because that's a very unique exterior. And, and do they have a burger challenge? No. It's just a Damn regular it. restaurant. TV lied to us. Damn it. Uh, what the hell? Yeah. What so the, the premise. Hell? I feel so betrayed. I know. it's. <sighs> it, it hurts us all, man. We're all hurt. Uh, yeah, so the premise of this they, gets... the, the SNL writers, they just don't consider the people they hurt in their, yeah. when they're writing their little sketches. They don't care about the, the hearts they break along the way. It, it's not right. It's not right. You know, like have, have some thought for the little people. Yeah, really. Like people are going to go in there expecting a, a you know to eat a ninety five ounce burger in yes. ten minutes, and I don't have words for the disappointment they're going to experience. I know. I'm surprised that people at the restaurant don't uh, complain. Like I'm sure the people are like, hey SNL, could you not 
use the exterior for, for our restaurant for that because people are here asking for a 95 ounce burger and a jumbo cherry chocolate shake and we don't have that you know we right. serve uh you know tilapia and and yeah. and, and bok choy and so yeah. we don't know what to do with, with all these people. And we're we're a vegetarian restaurant anyway. Yeah. I mean, what the hell? I yeah. mean, this is a this is a lawsuit in the making here. It really, really is. Ah. ah, live from live from New York. It's a lawsuit. Am I right? Guys? Yeah. Am I, am I, right? <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Pow! Yeah. Uh yeah. Anyway, Baja... it's, yeah, it's a it's a family. They're gathering. They're they're talking about <laughs> their father. <laughs> who's you know not what he once was so they're kind of talking about what's to be done with him they're like it's uh, an awkward conversation but we got to talk about this yeah so it's it's uh it's sarah sherman mikey day bo and yang yeah. heidi gardner and um and nate, nate. and uh yeah. so nate is dating heidi and she's kind of new to the family yeah and she's but, like hey i look I, I we haven't been together very long but i went through this with my parents last year so i'm here for you you know to be a you know, a, a resource if you have any questions or anything like that. And then, yeah. you know, uh, Dismukes is the waiter. He comes by, he says, Hey, you're, you know, here, here's all your food. And, and Heidi Gardner's character, your food is going to be here in just a minute. Right. It's a very and, sad, somber opening right. so far. Right. And right. no one, no one's playing it for jokes. No. Until. Until, you know, they start having the serious discussion and then uh, Dismukes comes out and he says, hey, and he's like ringing a bell and he's like announcing to the whole restaurant. Hey, you know, she's she's done the mile high burger challenge. So she has to finish this 95 ounce burger in under 10 minutes. And the yeah. grand prize is a free trip for two to Hawaii. Yeah, because like at first Heidi says, oh, well, no, I, I'm i sorry. I ordered this by mistake. Uh, because yeah. I just ordered the Mile High Burger. I thought it was like a Denver burger that put like a fried egg on it or something. I didn't right, expect it right. to be this massive tower of meat and buns with a yeah. giant ass chocolate milkshake. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I don't want It's like a foot high. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's when Dismukes is like saying, well, if you finish in 10 minutes, you go to Hawaii for free. And then she's like, oh, well, all right then. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So and yeah, and it's she is literally eating this burger in, in as sloppy a fashion as possible for the rest of the sketch. Yeah. So the family's trying to have this serious discussion about their father, whose uh, health right. is ailing, and yeah. we just see Heidi chewing on what I guess they actually made a real burger for this. It looked no, it, yeah, it it had to be real food. It, yeah, he's, yeah, he's really chowing it down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, and 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 Sarah at one point she stops and she says like wait I'm sorry are you actually doing this burger challenge right now and, and she's like well you know hey we've never been outside the country and, and Sarah says Hawaii's in in the United States yeah and Bargatti says like well I doubt that yeah yeah at one point they they stop again they're saying like wait what are you doing he said oh I'm soaking the buns Joey Chestnut style yeah and then we see uh, Bargatti helping Heidi shovel all this food in her face and it's just right she's just covered in burger sauce right. and meats and chocolate milkshake it's right it's a mess if if you have a you know sensitive gag reflex this this might uh -huh. make you you know be like oh. yeah and then dismix comes in again he says there are five minute, ri minutes remaining that means you can't use your hands anymore she's like oh great <laughs> And yeah, so she just like dives in and, and, and Nate very helpfully like gets her hair out of her face. Right. So it's like her like munching down, shoveling all this food in her mouth saying, right. oh, maybe she just put him in a home out of sight, out of mind. Right. Uh, right. We see uh, Bowen breaking a little bit at all the, yeah. the insanity going on. Um, Mikey starts to break a little yeah. bit. I mean, it's, yeah. Especially at the point where as Bowen's starting to break. He, Mikey just looks at him and says, like, guys, guys, come on. dad's bones are getting more brittle by the day. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why that made me laugh so hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, yeah. Yeah. I, look, Heidi went for it. She's, she is undoubtedly the MVP of this episode. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that was great. I, I just hope, I kind of hope that this doesn't lead to an, for her sake, I hope this doesn't lead to a whole series of sketches where she has to finish off like this massive amount of food. Yeah, I, I hope this doesn't become her, her thing. Yeah, if, if this becomes her Lisa from Temecula. 
Oh, boy. oh god, that'll that'll be like a hell of our own making. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, and I also like the part where uh, Sarah Sherman is kind of confronting her, saying, "Hey, I think all, 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 wait, why are you eating all this food? This is actually kind of disrespectful to what we're talking about right now." Mm-hmm. And then she, Heidi, with her hands covered in just chocolate sauce and and mm-hmm. burger sauce, saying, "Hey, hey," she, she puts her hands on Sarah's face. So, Practically putting her fingers in her mouth. I think she yeah. does put her finger in her mouth at one point. Yeah, and it's like, hey, yeah. hey, no, just I'm doing this for your father. Just look over there. And she turns her head with her hands covering Sarah's face and all the sauces, and mm-hmm. we see that the fa- their father was actually at this restaurant. He actually completed the Mile High Burger Challenge. So yeah, Heidi's yeah. character was like kind of doing this in tribute of her dad, right? Right of, of their dad. There was uh, there was actually like a long bit towards the end where the camera was just on Mikey and Bowen and Sarah because they had like a lot of dialogue to get through, and but we're seeing them crack up so much. Like obviously Heidi is just still going to town on this burger off camera, and I, I was like, I kind of wish we had a split screen right now. Yeah, <laughs> I wish SNL would like release a special edition of this sketch where it was just a split screen, where like one camera's totally on Heidi for the entire sketch. Release the Mile High Burger Challenge cut. Yes, yes, release the Heidi cut. <laughs> release the Heidi cut. <laughs> you know, because I, I want to see the whole thing. Because, you know, you know she had to just keep on eating no matter what. Because, you know, you yeah. don't know when the camera's going to cut back to you. So I would yeah, like she, to see the whole thing. I'd like to see what was cracking everybody else up so much, honestly. Yeah, she was just, like, chowing down on the thing like a rabid dog. Mm-hmm. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was, so, I mean, this was very funny. I think this is this is the runner-up for me for Sketch of the Week. Yeah, I mean, it's like simple premise, simple sketch. And yes, you could yeah. say it, it's a bit of a gross-out gag joke, but I sometimes sometimes they work. Sometimes that's all you need. I, I felt like, like this... I, you know, I admired the audaciousness of it. I, you know, it, I don't think it would have worked as well if they hadn't paired it with like, oh, we have to put dad in a home. You know, it had to be this ultra-serious discussion for this to really work. And and I think it really did. Yeah, yeah absolutely. This, this was a very funny. It was one of my favorites of the night. Yeah, it, it was a good one, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so next up, oh my lord, an SNL digital short in 2024, the year of our lord? Yeah. This- I, wow. This is like the first one since 2016 I was reading. Um, yeah. This is Sushi Glory Hole, you know, because we got Andy Samberg in the building, so... Yeah, we may as well. Let's, let's do a little Lonely Island up in this joint. That's right. We got two-thirds of the Lonely Island back up in this bitch with uh, Andy right. Samberg and uh, Akiva Schaefer as mm-hmm. uh, two businessmen trying to uh, pitch an idea to some investors, the investors being yeah. uh, Bowen, Maya, and Keenan. Mm-hmm. And, of yeah. course, they're, uh, you know, highly profitable. Biz- high- profitable? Profitable. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Springsteen. Their highly yeah. profitable business idea is a sushi glory hole, and right, it's just it's exactly Where what instead it's of said. instead of strange dicks, you'll be getting a snack. That's right. It's it's literally just as simple as that. It's a glory yeah. hole. You just kneel in front of a glory hole, and somebody puts sushi in your mouth. There's right. a there's an app for just, it, so you can find yeah. out where to go. Right. Yeah, it tells you where the closest sushi glory holes are in the city, because yeah. you know you're. You're running around the city, you feel a little peckish, you want a little sushi, and hey, when don't you want a little sushi when you're running around the city? Yeah, and of course, as they're pitching this, you know, they're they're wrapping it, and of course, as they're pitching this, the investors are disgusted, and they immediately leave, and of course, they're like, hey, wait, here, where are you going? Hear us out. Just hear us out. Just hear us yeah, out. hear us out. Hear us out. Hear yeah, us out. That, that's one of the big refrains, and <laughs> I love the lyric, uh, strictly nigiri coming out of the holes, <laughs> and they, they explain it a little more thoroughly, and they say, like, Hey, um, look, you got to be careful, though, because, you know, there, there aren't dicks coming out of the hole here. That's two stalls over and none of the stalls are labeled. Yes. Uh, so be careful because you could get a dick in your mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and at one point, they're like, you know, they're, they're running through the possibilities. They're like, you know, hey, you're out of the club. You need a little more energy. You're at a sushi restaurant. You don't like the sushi. You can go into a sushi <laughs> club. <laughs> It's just so dumb. It's funny. <laughs> it's beyond dumb. Yeah, but like, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's it still works. I think it's it's short. It's to the point. It's simple. I'm not saying I would partake of this service, but oh god, no! I'd at the very least be tempted. 
Well, hear us out, John. Just wait. Hear us out. Where are you going? Yeah. Hear yeah. me out. Hear us, just hear um, us out. <laughs> like, if... Okay, if the person handing me the sushi through the glory hole wore gloves, I would at least consider this. That is that is true. That That is something I didn't think about. Yeah, it is bare hands shoving yeah. raw fish and rice into your mouth. I'm good, I'm good with the raw fish. I'm good with... I look, I <laughs> love you? the sushi. Okay. Yeah. No, I, lo I love the sushi, but you know, right. yeah, glove up. Love up. Okay. But and yeah. Also, I, I'm going to look closely just to make sure it's not a dick. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Just just, just to be safe. Just I yeah. would have some concerns in that area as well. Yeah. So, you know, those are, those are my two main objections. No gloves on the hands, possibility of a dick. No glove, um, no love. Other than that, <laughs> other than that, I am down with this. Yes. Uh, I... I I would look. I love the idea of an app where you could just go somewhere and get some random sushi. Hey, I, I got no problem with that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a silly, dumb, enjoyable sketch. I thought. Uh, mm -hmm. Weird. We didn't get. We still haven't gotten like a PDD sketch. But like we we're, we're going back weird. to the OGs. Yeah. We're getting the. I, the... It, I, I think it's just taking longer to 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 clean up that pitch and shit. You know, mm, than, than anybody true. realized. Yeah, you really got in the nooks and crannies there. Yeah, I get all so. yeah, probably have to get a whole new couch. I mean, uh, but yeah, but uh, until then, we get we get sushi glory holes. It's good to see the boys sushi back. Sushi glory hole, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, and there was a one point where like Andy was like kind of rapping, kind of fast and like kind of mm -hmm. impressively. It's like, oh shit, he got bars. All right. Well, well they actually have musical skills, you know. Yeah, I but mean, still, you forget, mother motherfuckers, forget. Yeah. You got you got to let them know. Got to put them on game, son. Look, these motherfuckers did I'm on a boat and Jack Sparrow. True, true. You know, they got they got the grooves. You right, you right. Yeah. You know. They did Spring Break song. They married a man. Yes, they did. Oh wow, they did. Yeah. Wow, it's been forever. Oh yeah. Rewatch that. Still just as funny. All right, we'll do. Yeah. Uh and our ten to one sketch we're closing up with Coach Allen. Coach Allen. Got uh, halftime at a that big football game. The the coach is coming in. Just mukes is he's giving him a pep talk, and uh, we got we got Nate Bergazzi as Coach Allen, who who reminds the team that he still needs twenty dollars for the jerseys. Yeah, pretty. That's that's pretty much it. Like it's basically that's pretty much it. Yeah, the, the team is losing. They're feeling defeated. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this this mukes as I guess the assistant coach trying to amp the guys up. I think like, I think he was the chief coach. Chief coach. Yeah, I I, think I so. don't know sports. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think the hierarchy is because he was the first one to speak. Oh, uh, okay. Know, so I feel like he's the head the head coach. Okay, so he's the head coach. He was like, he was yeah. like, come on, guys, we got to get out there. You know, this we're eight weeks into the season. We we need to win this thing. And then right. he passes it off to Bargatze as the as the other coach, and he says, yeah, yeah, he he's more concerned about getting the twenty dollars for the jerseys than he is about the yeah. actual because he hasn't gotten it from everybody. Yeah, you know. I mean, it's yeah. eight weeks. You just ask your mom or dad to give her. Yeah. It's like, you know. Just go up to the sidelines. Ask your mom and dad when you yeah. get back out there. Exactly. You, know, you can write me a check, but you can't make it out to Coach Allen. That's not my name. I can't cash that. you got to use my full name. Yeah. And, of course, at the end of the sketch, like every, all the players are super pumped up and motivated to get right. Coach Allen that $20. Right. What's your Venmo, Coach? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, um, I like this. This is just quick and goofy, but I, I really liked it. it was yeah, fun. it's a lot shorter than I thought it'd be. It feels like they yeah. maybe cut it for time, but I think that actually helped it in a way. Because they're able to like, yeah, sort of... Yeah, it didn't overstay its welcome. It's it's just a little over two minutes. I mean, yeah. it's just yeah, it was just a fun, goofy, absurdist thing to end the night on. And exactly. I, I dug it. Yeah, yeah, like they kind of trimmed the fat, just got to the meat of the sketch, in and mm -hmm. out. Got some laughs. Good way yeah. to end the night, I thought. I thought. Yeah, yeah. Ended up on an up note. Absolutely. You know? And uh, then we also got a title card, uh, paying tribute to uh, you know the passing of uh, Chris Christopherson, mm -hmm. who hosted the show back in the first season. Uh, one like of the more the first season finale, I think. Yeah. Oh yes, right. Uh, one of the inf more infamous shows because, it, from what I have heard, like during dress rehearsal, he was uh, pretty inebriated. Throughout the dress oh, really? Rooms. Yes, that's Ooh. that's what the word on the street is, and uh, that's what the legend is. Huh? The legend okay. is so like between then, between the dress rehearsal 
and the, them going live, they had to like spend all the time just sobering him up, just pouring coffee into him. And he's a, he was able to get through it, but you can uh -huh. definitely tell he's sort of, he kind of slurs some words here and there. Like you could tell he's coming out of his oh. uh, drunken stupor. Well, I uh, want to go back and watch that episode. Now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's I didn't a pretty. Know this. Oh, really? Yeah. Where? Yeah. Look, where's that movie, Jason Reitman? Yeah, get it out there, Jace. But yeah, it's pretty infamous for him being uh, very, very uh, coming out of his drunken haze. But he was, he was okay. still able to deliver. I think he was from this, from the legend. He was so drunk, like some of the other cast members were like kind of learning his lines just in case they had to step mm -hmm. in for him and and uh, do it for him. But like he was able to pull wow. through. And from what I understand, it, it was it was a good episode. But that's, uh, yeah. that's something else. I didn't know that. I, that's that's a neat backstory. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, and by the way, this just reminded me. Um, did you know that our friend uh, Wally Fairstein, uh, cue card Wally, is he's writing a weekly column for Late Nighter now? Wah, wah, wah? Yeah. Yeah. This this newish website, Late Nighter, which covers all of like late night TV, including SNL, uh, cue card Wally. He's writing a weekly column on there and he's telling stories about his whole history with SNL and I read a column this week he was talking about when the third time uh Alec Baldwin hosted SNL with oh. he co-hosted with his his then wife uh, Kim Basinger and he was talking about just you know the challenges there because usually they put the hosts um uh, uh lines in black right and and but because they had two hosts they had to do Alec's lines in black and Kim's in blue and then that gets kind of confusing because they only have like so many colors. And so, you know, whoever in the cast usually has blue, they have to l use a new color, which can throw you a bit. And, you know, it's kind of fascinating. And he talks about how he, he took a picture with uh, Kim after the show uh, for his dad, because his dad is a big Kim Basinger fan. And well, took I a mean, nice who isn't? With her of Wally and his brother, um, uh, uh, Spike. Right, and Spike they were giving the the finger to their their dad. Ah, got him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Take love you, dad. Take that. So yeah, so check that out. Uh, go over to uh, lightnighter dot com and uh, yeah, Wally Wally's got stories to tell, folks. Yeah, friend of the podcast, Wally Ferris. Wally, give give it up for Wally. Cue card, Wally. Absolutely, give him a yeah, yeah. Read his words. Back on sometime. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, um, that's the episode, guys. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, overall, not a definitely a step up from last week. Not a bad episode. Yep. Pretty enjoyable, yep. I'd say. Yep. Good yeah. show. Good show. I, yeah. I enjoyed myself all the way through. I, I, I really liked it. I, you know, I don't feel like there were any real bad sketches. It was. Yeah. It was. It was fun. It was. Fun. Yeah, they're. Um, they've gotten their groove back, baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got we got uh, Mikey and Heidi and the Dana Carvey T-shirts again at the Good Nights. That's that's a cute thing. I hope they keep that bit up. I know. I, I hope so too. Hopefully, they'll uh, yeah. start selling some of those, reselling some of those uh, church lady T-shirts, or maybe in the store or something. Well, maybe they're still available in the NBC store. Maybe that's where they got them. I Ooh, know. do you tell. I don't, I don't know. All right. So, but oh. you know, that's fine. I just hope they keep that up. But yeah, last week I only noted that Mikey was in a in a Dana Carvey T-shirt, but Heidi was as well. So I wanna I wanna give them their proper due. So they're got it. They're showing respect to the king. Absolutely. Yes. Kiss the ring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, let's let's go to the people, see what the folks on Twitter said about this episode. We got a, oh, a yeah, good we amount a of responses. About that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. We got uh, we got our friend John Nias at Burtonesque 92 says, I try to temper my expectations for most sequels and return visits, including this. And it's a good thing because I thought a lot of this episode was just OK or fairly tepid. For me, the high point was dead guy down the water slide. Love the premise and the performances. I was braced for a second Washington's dream, and much like the second David S. Pumpkins, this one was fine unto itself, but I dislike the obligatory sequel nature of it. The final sketch was I was really enjoying. I just wish it had been placed earlier and not cut to shreds at 1 a.m. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, sounds like more than him, but... Uh, yeah. Well... Uh yeah, uh, our good friend Minette Moretti saying, I can't stand sketches that rely on people eating food messy. It's an ick factor that ruins my enjoyment. Which I I, I get it too. But, you know, maybe, maybe yeah. I'm I'm cool with it just because I'm a 
Disgusting human being. Who knows? You are. I've always said this about you. Yes. 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 Um, I knew it. I knew you said uh, that about me. You bet. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm John Trouble. And with me is disgusting human being, Darren Patterson. <laughs> uh, from and I'm your disgusting and... human being, Fabio. Yeah. 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 Uh, call back. <laughs> you call back. Our friend uh, Boardman Gets Paid says, Hi, guys. Hope all is well. Hope everyone had a great week. Yeah, I was I was sick for a lot of it. Uh, this episode was I. Uh, the opening monologue made me uh, never want to check for this guy's stand up. Ooh, damn! Can't, whoa! All right. Uh, wow. Okay. I, I wonder if you already had a dislike from for Nate's stand up from last year, or were you just not familiar? Uh, oh. then he says, but the rest of the sketches made me think. Okay, he might be funny. That's really all I got, guys. Love you guys. Peace, heart. Yeah, a lot of people are kind of not as hot on it that I as I thought it'd be. Wow. That's uh, our surprising. good friend Nick's our good friend Nick's door saying better than last week for sure. The cold open went back to being the worst sketch of the night. Uh, water slide was my high. Worked well for Nate, like the airplane sketch last year. Washington's dream was fine, but diminishing returns, like a B plus for the night. I'd agree with yeah. that. A B plus yeah, is about right. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I heart hater. Ooh, I, I bet this person is a Bill Hater fan. Says, so uh, ooh, says, and it's I underscore heart underscore hater, like Bill Hater says. I am so hell- happy for Longfellow. The water slide sketch was so funny. He and Nate Bargatze had excellent chemistry. Uh, yeah, agreed. Yeah, agreed. I'm they, glad they played off each other really well. Yeah, I really like Longfellow. I really hope they give him more to do and more to to grow and stretch out. Like, I mean, now he's like a member of the main cast now. So like, Mm -hmm. I feel like he's going to get some opportunities to, to really shine and show what he can do, which, uh, yeah. Yes. Thumbs up. I say. Yeah. Uh, and then our good friend techie at uncle Scrooge DCK saying no PDD. You're killing me. Smalls serviceable sandlot reference. Yes. So serviceable, but a lot of repeat humor. Mulaney save us from a generic season. I'm assuming he meant Mulaney. I think that's a typo for Mulaney. Yeah. yeah. The, the E is right next to the R on the keyboard. Yeah. And, you know, Twitter doesn't have an edit button. Unless, so. yeah, unless there's a new host that I'm unaware of named Mulaney, I'm assuming yeah. it's Mulaney. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a safe assumption. And uh, lastly, Lucho Blanco uh, says, oh boy, you guys are going to hate this one. Featuring some of your top pet peeves, political cold open, minus Trump. Lots of cameos, no weird sketches, no PDD, cold play, not sure about this one, and plenty of silliness everywhere. Show's best, golf pre-taped, a five. Mm, uh, I'm assuming that's a five out of ten. Well, yeah. No, actually, we kind of like this one. Yeah, I mean, uh, political cold open, it was shorter than last week, so yeah, it, that's a it plus. Was, it was fine. I mean, I did I did have a couple of objections to that, because I, I felt like they were misportraying what actually happened in the debate a bit, but whatever yeah um, uh no weird sketches um sushi glory hole what sushi glory hole that's pretty weird I'd, I'd say water slide was kind of weird and and the burger one was had some nice weirdness so yeah, yeah. or even um, Sabato gigante is kind of oddball too yeah um lots of cameos really no more than last week it's the um, same amount actually yeah 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 and uh, uh, no please don't destroy it. yeah uh, well I'm with you there yeah that's we, what, what's happening with, with our boys? Are, are they on the show or not? Uh, I want to see them back, yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, they still have an office at 30 Rock, as far as I know. So, yeah, maybe they just haven't come up with anything that's made it into the show yet. Or yeah, Come on, bring our boys home. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Coldplay, yeah. Nah. I'm fine with Coldplay. I, yeah. You know, when I heard there were going to be musical guests, I was like, oh, that's cool. It's inoffensive. It's fine. Yeah, they're not my faves, but, you know, whatever. And plenty of and silliness. Plenty of, we like silliness. What do you mean, plenty of we, silliness? We enjoy some silly. Yeah. It's a comedy show. We like the silly. Yeah, we're not we're not stuck up uh, fuddy duddies. Yeah. We get, we get what, silly. What are you on about, Lucho? What, what's going on? Yeah, what's your problem, man? What's going on? Yeah. What's, hey. yeah. And by the way. Hey, hey. <laughs> by the way. What's hey. going on? I can't tell hey. if you're doing Joe Biden or uh, Owen Wilson. Uh, I, well, I was kind of doing Carvey as Biden, but yeah, I guess it did sort of sound like Owen Wilson. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sounds kind of like Owen Wilson. Wow. Yeah. 
Oh, by the now way. I want to see Owen Wilson do Biden. Ooh. That's, yeah, that'd be fun, right? Oh, my. Brains would break. <laughs> yeah, they really would. So, okay. I don't know. So, yeah, um... Yeah, uh, Lucho, uh, I hate to tell you, I don't, I don't think you really called it. <laughs> I mean, That's right. You don't know anything about us. Yeah. You don't know me, man. You don't know me. I mean, look, I don't want to get too harsh, but no. No, we, we, we dug this one. Yeah. yeah. Thumbs up. You know, it had doggies. Come on. Come, yeah, th- that alone gets to 10 points in our book. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I just, I just love seeing doggies on my late night TV. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Damn straight. Uh, yeah, so that's the episode, guys. Uh, thanks again for listening, as always. Next week, we got uh, Ariana Grande and Stevie Nicks. I still can't believe she's doing the show. That Yeah, that's funky, right? It is, just because, like, you know, I'm used to just some young, new, hip, like, artist that, like, I'm not familiar with because I'm not on the TikToks. But yeah. so they're getting, like, this, you know, this seasoned vet, this stalwart of the music industry, Stevie Nicks to be on the show. So I'm like, wow, that's, that's, I, yeah. I applaud that. I look forward to that. I mean, stand back, stand yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's, wow. What's, what's going to happen there? Um, yeah. I mean, I know she know. has some new songs out. I think she's coming out with a new oh. album, so she'll probably do some stuff off that. But like, if she does okay. something like edge of 17 or something like that, I'll, I'll lose my mind. That would be cool. That'd yes. Be cool. I'll be, I'll be dancing. We'll callback. To Sorry? Her, her, do, do you think we'll have a callback to the, the, the sketch about uh, you know Stevie Nicks's uh, fajita. I don't. That's too much of a deep cut for. Uh, yeah, the the world ain't ready for that. Like you got to get Lucy Lawless back in there and fly her in. I don't think we're gonna get that. It'd be nice. Yeah, but I don't think so. It'd be nice. It'd, It'd be, be nice. nice. Maybe just somebody hands her a fajita at some point in the evening. Ooh, that'd you be know? tight. Have a fajita glory hole. Yeah. Oh boy. Wow. That's the million dollar idea, my friend. Yeah, let's copyright that. Let's do it. Bam. Uh, yeah, so uh, next week, Ariana Grande, Stevie Nicks. Join us, won't you? But yeah, until then, you can follow us on the Twitters because we refuse to call it X, at SNL Nerds Show. And mm-hmm. you can follow me, myself, and I on all the social medias at Darren Credible. That's D-A-R-I-N, Credible. Yeah, and if you don't want to follow Darren, but you want to follow me, what? Um, you, you can you can follow me at Trumbull Comic. I I actually had a viral tweet this week. So, Ooh, you know, yeah, I got to keep an eye on me and see what's going on. Yeah, oh I, wow, look at you! You're all Gen Z, aren't you? There. I know, I know. This, yeah, it's it was one of the dumber jokes I've ever made. <laughs> it, it got like two hundred thirty eight k likes, and I was like, what the. What the hell's going on? That's I, I don't know. That's what the Twitter like. Like, there's been so many times like I've put out well thought out jokes mm-hmm. and whatnot out there, and it gets nothing. I tweet out something that it took me like the two stupidest st- thing. Yeah. yeah, like something I, I thought of while I was on the toilet, and it fucking yeah. shoots up like a rocket ship. So I'm like, what? It's you never know. Every time I have gone viral, it's been on accident. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's never the thing you think. It's 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 nuts. I don't know if that just means we're not the best judges of our own material, or people have weird taste, or or what. But anyway, that's right. Yeah, people. You want to see more of that craziness? I'm at Trumbull Comic. T R U M B U L L in the word comic. So okay, yeah. and uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I guess that's it. So we're just gonna you know peter out and uh, yeah. So next week, uh, Ariana Grande, CV next. Is she is she in that uh, the Wicked movie? She Wicked is. She's she's, in that? she's one of the leads. She plays uh, Glenda the Good Witch, if I'm not mistaken. Interesting. Huh? Yeah, and also uh, on in that movie Wicked, Mr. Bowen Yang. So like, I'm sure that both of them will, are gonna have some sketches together. We, we gotta have a Wicked sketch next week, right? It's I I I probably yeah yeah. I'm calling it now. We're gonna have a Wicked sketch. Ooh, place your bets, people. Yep. Yep. So come back here and see if I was right about that uh, next week with Ariana Grande and CV Next. But until then, nerd out. out. This has been a non-productive media presentation. Executive producer, Frank Hablawi. This program and many others like it on the Non-Productive Network is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Please share it, but ask before trying to change it or sell it. For more information, visit non-productive.com.